Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we deliver mining insights and bullion sales in the form of physical delivery, offshore depositories, and private blockchain distributed ledger technology. Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we deliver mining insights and bullion sales. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us for a conversation is James Pettit, the president, CEO, and director of Abin Resources. Mr. Pettit, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Before we delve into today's interview, Mr. Pettit, please introduce us to Abin Resources and the opportunity you present to the market. Well, Abin Resources is a, it's a gold exploration company, and we're focused in really safe jurisdictions like Canada, for one, uh, British Columbia, for, you know, if we want to narrow it down a bit, uh, the Yukon and Saskatchewan. Um, the the Canadian or sorry the the BC property is the it's in the Golden Triangle which is the northwest quadrant of British Columbia that is uh, a very notable area that uh, people are going it's it's got a strong history uh, let's call it that it's very unique in the world uh, it's a home to some very high grade discoveries in the past and uh, and currently too Mr Pettit take us to your flagship Forest Kerr Gold project. And let's visit the North Boundary Zone, where Abin Resources just released an exciting press release regarding analytical results from the ongoing 2019 Drill Exploration Program. Well, yeah, that's a good place to start. Uh, we've now released eight holes um, on the season so far. I do believe we're on hole 23, actually still drilling. Um, and uh, those holes were drilled just south of the north, the, the high-grade part of the north boundary zone, uh, trying to connect the dots between the north that high-grade zone in the north boundary and the old Naranda hole, which is about 30 years old, which was a very high-grade hole, about 10 meters, let's abbreviate it, to 10 meters of 38 grams, well over an ounce. Um, that's never been duplicated there, so we're trying to figure out if this, this is 300 meters of, uh, south of the north boundary zone. And uh, we want to try to connect the dots, see if there's anything there in between them, and then see what's around that north boundary zone, or sorry, the Naranda hole, and give us some extension of the high grade. And uh, so far, it's got us a little bit baffled. Um, you know, when we came out with our initial results, it, uh, the market kind of sold off. People were expecting high grade because last year we hit a spectacular hole in our first hole of the season. And this year, it's more along the lines of, uh, you know, what you would expect from exploration on many cases. You, you know, rarely are you that lucky to hit that super high-grade stuff. But, you know, we're hitting a lot of mineralization. Uh, what we're seeing so far is a little lower grade than what we've done the last two years, concentrating around that uh, north boundary zone. Uh, but what we do know is when you put 30-some-odd holes into one area, you pretty much got it contained. And uh, so our best opportunity is now to move south through this Naranda zone, we call it. Um, and we're finding things like, you know, the chemical alter alteration is changing. And it's becoming actually better. It's what you want to see, this quartz searsite. And we're moving into a potassic environment as well. So you get this QSP, it's called. That's, um, from an explorationist point of view, that's Nirvana. Um, and the potassic influence there means we're getting closer to a heat source. So we're in an environment that's heavily mineralized with high grade and lots of low to mid grade. It's a big area. The boundary zone itself is about what is it, four kilometers long, two kilometers wide. Um, and, you know, we're going to start drilling according to the alteration, the geochem and the new geophysics that we've got, which is really quite something. And, and there's plenty of, uh, of uh, anomalies to work with, which we feel are intrusives just down below. Uh, could be feeding the system as we get uh, you know, a little further along in our drilling and getting the analytics back, we're going to know more and more and more. But this, the potassic environment that we're in, this alteration, leads us to believe there's probably a feeder zone generally, you know, within a thousand meters that's kind of the you know the uh the way you look at it um so you know we're hopeful we think this is a 
one of the best exploration programs around. We know we're still in a, a hydrothermal environment as opposed to a you know, porphyry environment. But I'm not adverse to finding out that there's a big porphyry down below if you've got, because we do know we've got hydrothermal above. Could be, could be very exciting. Well, the feeling is mutual on the merits of the, the future of, of Edmund Resources. You know, the company just reported on drill results identified as FK1947 through FK1954. What were you able to identify for shareholders? Well, uh, it, it, those in particular, um, it's given us a pretty good read of, uh, based on the alteration, we can see a bit of a change in the mineralization. It's a little more polymetallic. We're, we're getting not just gold, copper, we're getting silver in there as well. And I know in some of the holes that we haven't even reported on yet, we're, 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 we can see zinc um, as well. But, you know, our primary interest is the precious metals. And, um, you know, we did hit some uh, high-grade sections in these holes. They weren't spectacular, like, you know, that one meter of 300-gram stuff. You, you, we had, um, what was that, 18 gram. And, you know, they're, those are really good, um, and that's, you know, keeping the, the hope alive. But I think we will hit more high-grade as we go forward. Um, you know, those particular holes were drilled around the area that the old Naranda hole was drilled. And uh, so the, the five of them, I think, is what we've done. And then we've actually, one of them was oriented towards the south a bit. Um, so... You know, it's just showing us that this the mineralization is is extended. We keep we keep hitting it. So, like to hit the high grade more often, of course. But uh, you know, whatever. It's we'll, we'll take what we get as long as we learn and and know more and more and more. Well, there's nothing wrong with continuity either. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I mean, if you look at that uh, on our news release, the, the second map, which shows the uh, the mineralized event in each hole you can kind of see the trend i mean it's it is it's widely mineralized the whole area we're in is, is in excess of uh i think on that chart it's about five six hundred meters long and every hole is full of mineralization yeah mr that, pettit while, while you're actually referencing that can you walk us through the map please yeah sure um the the uh first one uh, that we're looking at is the whole area, the Golden Triangle, where the yellow, long, narrow yellow property in the middle of it. And that's long and narrow because it's following a major fault. You can see it from space. It's that pronounced. And uh, it's considered one of the engines of the whole area. And uh, you need that. You need this massive structural feature. And that generates a lot of fluids into the area. And the fluids bring the gold, the precious metals with them. So we, we stake uh, three large claim packages, which can, that, that's what they look like when they're all put together. Um, the next map down, uh, you know, with the black lines on it, that's, uh, those are drill, pa drill holes. Um, the first, you can see the, the upside down V at the top. That's, we're trying to fill a, a, a gap there uh, in the north boundary zone. And, you know, didn't come out what we thought it would, so we've obviously you know, hit the outer limits of that north boundary zone. Uh, everything inside it, those red dots are where we drilled from, the platforms, and that's the, in, inside that is the guts of the really high grade that we hit the last couple of years. And then as you move south, uh, that long, narrow, li the long line is actually two holes, one above, one below the other, and that crosses, uh, uh, cuts across the, uh, that Naranda zone, and then the, the the bunch down below, the sideways looking V, those are following up on some alteration and touching on again into that Naranda hole down below it. And uh, and then if you go down to the next one, you can see that all the holes are mineralized. Everything's mineralized. It's it's really quite impressive. Now the green is lower grade, but some of those holes are you know that that lower grade, and even if it's half half gram. Uh, that extends over the length of the hole. Mm -hmm. Well, before we leave uh, your project portfolio, are there any updates on the Justin and Chico projects that you would like to share with us? Well, other than what we put out, um, got to tell you, I wasn't overly 
joyed by the results when we finally got them. It took a while to get them. Um, the RAB drill we were using, which is a rotary air blast drill that you can it, it can give you results relatively cheaply. Uh, the one thing about these percussion type of drills, it's got to be dry. And the environment we were drilling in, it turned out to be a lot of alluvial water underneath. And that you know, that might have made it a little more difficult for to, to get proper assays because if there's water in there. Uh, this isn't solid core. It's it's crushed. It's pulverized. And if there's ever any heavier metal in there and there's water, it'll all drift to the bottom. So you won't get a representative value in, in, in those cores. It, it needs to be dry. I've done lots of that in Nevada over the years, and it works great. Then every now and again, when you need geology, you put a diamond drill hole in, and it gives you some really good geology of what you've been drilling. Um, and then we drilled also a uh, diamond drill up there. We did four holes, which one of them was exactly what we were looking for. The other three were not as good, but that one shows us that there is life there because we did drill it in 2012, and there's a there's a big um, uh, intrusion-related gold system. That's what we found back then with this area that we were using the percussion drill in. Um, that's an area that's much older. It's, it's um, you know, orogenic in nature, so it's much older. And that intrusion-related system came up through it. So we thought there'd be a connection between the two, but unfortunately the, the, the RAB drill didn't really work for us the way we wanted it to. So, you know, we may give it another shot or, or somebody else. We may option the property and somebody else can do that. Um, we're pretty focused on the, the forest curve. And sorry, in the Chico, uh, we haven't done anything for... You know, going on a year and a half now because we got all set up to to do some drilling there, and we really would like to go back. But uh, we ran into a little in, uh, influence from the natives. Um, they were having banned elections, and uh, I guess they were pretty sensitive. Even though all the all the communications we had with them didn't seem to make any difference, so they wanted us out of there. So we left, and uh, now they're asking us to come back. So. That's something I'm going to analyze going into the new year because you, that's something we can drill in the winter. And uh, you know, we'll see where that goes. In the meantime, I've got a few other few other very good potential, you know, looking projects that could be year-round for us. So we'll just wait and see how those play out for us. Well, that sounds very favorable. Switching yeah. gears. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sir. Yeah. It, no, we're looking forward to it. Uh, you know, as a shareholder myself, I'm always watching what you're doing, and I know there's a method to the madness. Switching gears. Mr. Pettit, what does the current capital structure look like for Abin Resources? Uh, well, issued and outstanding, we're about 117 uh, million shares right now. And, you know, as of two days ago, we got $3 million in the till. And this year's drill program is basically three quarters paid for already so we're going to end the season in good shape and uh, uh, f sorry fully diluted uh, we're at 137 million shares and uh, that could bring in a substantial amount of money um, you know if we get the stock back up to where it was if we're you know if we hit a high grade hole like we've got I think 17 18 more holes to report on um, we could easily get a lot more money taken down in, in warrants. You know, for our audience members, a buying opportunity is when the thesis makes sense and the price is low, and that's exactly what we have right here. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, the company recently had a sell-off for no material reason, and we look uh, to be active buyers at these prices. Did you want to make any comments, sir, regarding the current movement? Well, the most of the calls I'm getting is, you know, yes, it did sell off. Um, when we put out the original, the, the initial news this season on the first three holes, because they didn't stand up to last year's first couple holes, um, and that's this is exploration. Most of the calls I'm getting right now are asking me, not why did it? They they know why it came down. They're asking if this is when they should be um, in the market buying, and we're we're again at, at basically December prices. And I would say, yeah, because nothing's changed. Zero. Yep. 
<laughs> Again, that's why we're going to be active buyers at these prices for our audience members. In closing, sir, what is the next unanswered question for Evan Resources, and when should we expect a response, and what will determine success? Well, the unanswered question is, uh, you know, we're trying to vector into a, that heat source that we're now aware of from the alteration. So, you know, that's the unanswered question. Where is it? We'll know a lot more at the end of this season, and along the way, we could well hit, you know, when we get our assays back. We, we you know, there is, there is core in the lab that we, we had sent in on rush, but the lab will not take any more rush orders because they're so backed up. So, you know, we're waiting patiently for the next batch and the next batch and the next batch. We'll be putting out news till, well, probably into November. Well, we're looking forward to those press releases. The last question I have for you, sir, and that is my favorite one, and that is, what did I forget to ask? Well, you know, we could have talked a little bit about the current gold market. And uh let's touch on that. For, huh? Let's touch Sorry? on that. Let's touch on yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's 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 exciting. I mean, middle of May, um, you know, we're up $300 since the middle of May basically, uh give or take 10. Um that's increased uh, expectations out there and especially I'm um, dealing with a retail market not so much institutional and their expectations are way up could be why the, the it sold off the way it did um, you know they want good news then there's way more of them in the market and most of the people that are calling me and asking me is this the time I should be in the buying in the market it's you know I'm I'm not advising anybody but I'm going you know are you a shareholder no I'm not and I said well then yeah, it's ten cents. You know, <laughs> Canadian. Why wouldn't you be? Absolutely. Um, you know, that's that's kind of the the heightened awareness is is creating this a bit of a frenzy. Um, you know, but you know, the juniors they're not really getting the glory yet. It that'll come. The mid tiers are starting to move, and the the majors are are getting you know big price swings up. Well, Putin Capital is moving your way, sir, because I'm, I'm heading your way to buy additional shares, as I, again, I've, I've said this earlier, where we're looking to be active buyers at these prices. Mr. Pettit, for someone listening that wants to get more information about Abin Resources, please share the website address. It's abinresources.com. It's a really good website, too. There's a lot of info on it. For additional inquiries about Abin Resources, please call Don Myers at 604-639-3851. That number again is 604-639-3851. He may also be reached at info at abinresources.com. Abin Resources trades on the TSXV symbol ABN and on the OTCQB symbol ABNAF. Abin Resources is a sponsor of Proven and Probable, and we are proud shareholders for the virtues conveyed in today's message. Before you make your next bullion purchase, be sure to call me. I'm a licensed representative for Miles Franklin Precious Metals Investments, where we provide a number of options to expand your precious metals portfolio from physical delivery, offshore depositories, precious metal IRAs, and private blockchain distributed ledger technology. Call me directly at 855-505-1900. That number again is 855-505-1900. Or you may email maurice at milesfranklin.com. Finally, please subscribe to provenandprobable.com, where we deliver mining insights and bullion sales. Mr. Pettit, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.